Hi everyone, a lot of you already may recognise Eric. He has gone pretty viral on nearly every social media platform at this point. But if you don't know who Eric is, I'm going to be talking about his story, how he came to be in my care, all about his funky moves and quirks, and how he went from this to this. It has been over a year's worth of work put into Eric to completely change the kind of horse he is now and how he handles certain situations. So we're going to start right at the beginning with some very early videos of Eric when he first came to me in December 2022. He came to me on sales livery on behalf of his owners who had decided that he was not the horse for them. Uh, they had owned him only about two weeks when he first started rearing quite extremely with them and they did the exactly right thing to do. They had assumed that it was a pain response. And they took him to the vets and had absolutely everything checked. Uh, this is the, the main question I get with Eric is when people see his moves, they obviously assume he is in pain. Now, I totally agree that 90% of the time when a horse is displaying extreme behavior, it is usually a pain response, if not an anxiety response. Now, for Eric, it is not a pain response. His owners had absolutely everything checked and we have also done our own investigations since he has been with me. So I wanted to make that very clear before we carried on with the video that the very first thing that was checked was that he was comfortable and happy in himself physically, as obviously with the behaviour that Eric shows you would be very concerned that he was feeling discomfort and I want to assure everybody that he is not. This is the first time that Eric actually did anything with me. I just asked him to jump a spooky filler and he had quite a lot to say about that. Now, Eric at the time was about to turn 13. He was 12 turning 13 and he had competed a lot as a younger horse. He is not scared of fillers. He absolutely had no reason to spook at that filler. But the problem wasn't the spook, but it was the napping and the rearing afterwards. The minute Eric got slightly upset, he decides that that's enough. He's not doing any more. And I'm really not doing anything crazy here. I am just sitting out. I'm just asking him to walk on. I'm not using the whip. I'm just asking with my leg for him to move on. And he eventually did. So Eric had come to me quite unfit. It was winter and icy and snowy, so it was very difficult to ride the horses at the time. And he hadn't been in an awful lot of work in the last four months when he first came to me. So we just started working on the flat, getting him over little exercises, trying to build up some muscle, just focusing on training at home, getting him round a few courses of fences, just ironing out all of those little details to prepare him to start competing again eventually. Now, like I said before, um, he has nothing physically wrong with him. He had been treated for ulcers um, as they had thought that, you know, the last resort, if that is what's causing the behaviour. So he did have full ulcer treatments and then a scope to confirm that the ulcers had been treated. Unfortunately, even after being totally cleared of ulcers and given a full bill of health, in every other area from the vet, Eric did still display the rearing and the bucking and the napping behaviour. So this really did solidify the fact that it was a behavioural issue and not something caused by a physical issue. Now, I do want to stress that it's not Eric being naughty. It is a problem rooted in anxiety, but I will get more into that later. But for now, here is a video of Eric and I jumping. This was a few weeks into him being with me. We started to put the fences up a little bit as he got stronger, though he was still as you can see not particularly fit and a little weak in some areas you can see he takes a couple of awkward little jumps this was purely just weakness he needed to build up more muscle he got tired quite easily he was coming back into work and we were just easing up the level of work we were doing with him as we went we were really just trying to build his confidence and build his muscle and it is funny for me looking back on these videos because he really does look like a completely different horse but it's nice to see how far we've both come myself in my riding and Eric in him after a good few weeks of training it was time to take Eric out to his first outing which was a little training show at a local venue I was very lucky to have this warm-up arena to myself as I knew the owners and they allowed me to use the liveries arena rather than the main warm-up arena because another thing we have to contend with Eric is the fact that he's horse shy and he doesn't handle busy warm-ups very well and we really just wanted to keep him nice and relaxed. 
So Eric's main issue with his owners was that he was very nappy in the ring. Generally, when he first got in there, but he would nap by the gate at the beginning of his round. And if you eventually got him going, he would nap mid-round as well. And he did rear quite a bit. So this was really my first taster of Eric doing his very best to show me all his best moves. And I'm going to share with you guys exactly how that went. So our first class was the 80 centimetres. Immediately, Eric, the first time I came round by the gate, he started rearing. And this did go on for a fair amount of time. Uh, luckily, it was a training show. So they did give me more time than you would ordinarily be allowed once the bell has rung. But as it wasn't, you know, a proper BS show, it was just a training show. They were very kind and allowed me to go through this whole process with Eric. So same again. I'm not actually doing anything. He did nearly get me off there. Um, I'm not doing anything major with him. I am just asking him to walk on. He is going up. I am ignoring him. All I'm doing is asking him to walk on. I ask him with my legs. He is having a big tantrum about it. And I say the word tantrum loosely. Like I said, this is an anxiety rooted issue. He's nappy and insecure. So he wants to stay by the gate. He wants to stay where the other horses are. It is an insecurity thing. I would also like to say that at this point, this was the first time I had ever dealt with a horse like this. So I'm aware I do make mistakes along the way, but I was learning with him just as much as he was learning with me. So we do manage to get away and over fence one and we do have a little spook coming down into fence two he backs off quite a bit he was quite spooky in the ring and again he was very insecure and anxious so the minute we came past the gate again he started getting nappy and this does involve him going up he really doesn't want to leave the gate this is where all the other horses are this is where he feels safe and secure at this point he does not feel safe and secure with me he doesn't know me very well we haven't built that relationship up yet so he really doesn't trust me at this point I, again, I do manage to get Eric away, but the whole round is honestly a bit of a shambles. As you can see, he's backing off. He's very spooky. I'm just trying to ride him through it. I'm trying to give him confidence into the fences. These fences are very small for him. He was a very capable jumper. He had just lost a lot of confidence and didn't have a lot of confidence in his rider, which is where the napping comes from. But I was very happy that that time around, he didn't nap by the gate. He did continue to jump. And it was, like I said, it was quite a wobbly round. This was very early days. This was at, I think, January 2023. So our first outing together, our first proper long course. And we'd obviously had a little bit of drama at the start, but he did start to relax the more we went round. And you can kind of see it in his demeanour. He starts to listen to me a little bit. He starts to relax. The anxiety starts to ease a little bit. And I do actually get a few nice jumps out of him. And I was actually very happy for our first round. He had been getting eliminated with his owners due to the napping. So I was very happy just to continue and get him round that course. This was our second round, which was 90 centimetres. Now, I won't play this whole round because Eric was actually excellent. He's still quite wobbly, still quite green as a partnership, but he didn't have any rearing. He didn't nap. He was a lot more relaxed and it really was a successful first outing in my eyes. I had a lot to take away, a lot to work on in training. I'd really got to know him quite well just over the course of the day. Um, I think it was a really great experience for us and a great start to our partnership. I'd like to now show this video of a few weeks later. I took Eric home, we did a lot of training, and then we came back to the same venue for another training show. And he really came out so relaxed and happy. He popped around the 90 slash 1 meter class. Um, again, it was just a training show, so we weren't going to be competitive. We were just schooling round. And he really did feel like a completely different horse. He didn't nap at all. He was very relaxed. He was very happy in himself the whole day. Uh, that he was at the venue, he seemed very relaxed and a lot less anxious than he had been the last time. So this was a really great stepping stone for him. Um, but obviously this was back at the same venue. So the next step for him was to take him out to a new venue to see if we would be able to work through this anxiety that he would 
that would present itself generally in a new place, a new environment where he would become overwhelmed, which is why he would start napping and rearing and sometimes bucking. So this was Eric and I's first affiliated BS show. We just jumped the British Novice and the Discovery, which is 90 and one meter. Unfortunately, I don't have the full rounds from this day, but he was pretty good. Um, the only minor drama we had was towards the end of a round, actually. He had started his round very well. And this was us coming over fence 10. And I only had two fences left and I got a little bit complacent. And he caught me a bit off guard and he had a bit of a nap. And I was trying to turn right and he decided he was going left towards the gate. And he stood up a couple of times. But if you compare this to his first show... This was already a huge improvement. This didn't last nearly as long. It was far less dramatic. There was a lot less rearing involved. And he did continue on much quicker than he did the first time. Move on now to our first stay away show together. Now, this show was probably our biggest breakthrough at that point. It was our first major step towards where we are today now. And this was because Eric jumped three days at Berry Farm and he was perfect the entire time. He did not put one hoof out of line. He did fantastic rounds every time I took him in the ring, which included doing our first newcomers 110 class. This was a huge confidence boost for the both of us. We really started to make those early steps towards working together as a partnership and getting to know each other. And I was just so happy that he'd been so amazing all weekend. This brings us to our next show, which was Coomberland's. Now, I really felt like I had conquered getting Eric into the ring calmly at this point. He would trot in very nicely and relaxed. And we came over fence one and immediately he napped by the gate. Now, again... This was a new venue, he was a little bit anxious and he did cling by the gate. But as you can see, it was over very quickly with minimal drama. And he actually jumped the rest of his round perfectly and technically clear. We did get faults for the napping as it goes down as a resistance. <laughs> but he didn't touch a fence and he actually completed his round very nicely. Then on to the next class, we did the meter 10 and I circled him by the gate this time to see if he would try and nap and he didn't. He was perfect and this was our second ever 110 together. He did a beautiful, beautiful clear round and he was very relaxed. He was traveling forwards. I hope you can see at this point, we really start to get Eric traveling a bit more compared to at the start where he was quite sticky and a bit stuffy and just not really traveling over the ground. This is where we started to open up his stride a little bit and get him using himself. Because if you look at Eric now, he absolutely eats up the ground, but it has been a process. Now, at this point with Eric, I was riding a bit of a high. I really thought we were on the up. I thought, it, you know, it can only get better from here. So we went to Pike the next week and he actually did really well in his first class. We jumped the meter five. I'm pretty sure he came fourth or fifth, maybe. Um, I know he, you know he had a placing and he jumped a really lovely clear round. That was him coming past the gate. We had no fuss and no drama. Um, and he, he did a great round. So the next round was our meter ten. And we had a little issue in the warm-up. We had somebody crash into us in the warm-up and he got very upset and stressed. And knowing what I know now, I should have just not done my round. Um, as you can see, Eric was really stressed out. Um, I should have just called it a day after we'd had that incident in the warm-up. I should have said, OK, he's got upset now we should go home. But at that point, I didn't know him as well as I do now. So I thought we're going to give this a go. And he went in the ring, he had a drama and he left the ring again. <laughs> and that was us eliminated. Um, the bell had rung and we left the ring. Um, but I did request if I could go back in to jump HC, which uh, is non-competitive, as I really wanted to get Eric around that course. Now, again, knowing what I know now, I should have just taken him home. I should have called it a day. This was our second attempt in the ring. Um, as you can see, he was beyond stress. He was not happy. Um, I should have taken him home. Now I'll hold up my hand and say that as it is now. Knowing what I know now about him, it wasn't going to happen that day. And I should have just called it a day rather than keep persisting. And in turn, I stressed him out. As you can see, he was even more stressed this time around. And we left the ring again, so it was another elimination. Um, at that point, I said, OK, yep, yeah, it's not happening today. Um, and we did take him home. After that, I decided to give him a little break away from show jumping and we decided to go hunting for a bit of fun and Eric absolutely loved it. I think it was really the confidence boost he needed, a change of scenery, just complete refresher. 
Um, he jumped some really decent hedges. He was absolutely fab. And he even had a few horses stop in front of him and he kept jumping anyway. And it was really great change of scenery for him after that bad round. After that, it really did feel like we got back on track. We were consistently jumping one metre and one ten. Eric started to get more competitive in his classes as we started to really crack those jump offs and getting him travelling forward. We started practising some turns. We were just having back to back good shows. And we really thought that you know, this was the end of it. He was good to go now. And I was very wrong, but I didn't know that at the time. So this was a notable show, Wellington. Um, it's quite hilarious because this was our metre 10 round, which we actually ended up winning. And it was my first ever one metre 10 win um, ever on any horse and obviously with Eric and little did I know we would go on to win many many more in the future um, but actually in the first class which was the meter we got eliminated uh, which makes the show rather hilarious because we got eliminated and then we won um, and we got eliminated because he had a bit of a moment at fence one he just spooked at it spun and had a big old buck and I didn't manage to get him round to fence one. Sadly, I don't have the video of this. I'm not sure where it ended up. But this was our winning round. Um, and yeah, this was just a huge breakthrough for me. Um, it was a personal goal to win a class at this level. Eric was really making a lot of dreams come true for me at this point. And little did I know that he would continue to do that um, tenfold. He really has been the most amazing horse. But this was probably our first, you know, big win together. It's a really memorable show for me. Um, but like I said, I really thought that we'd cracked Eric at this point, that we wouldn't have any more dramas. And I was so, so wrong. I thought I knew Eric so well at this stage. And I really didn't. Uh, looking back, um, I, I hardly knew him at all. Um, and I really thought we'd completely cracked him. But I guess you live and you learn. Um, and although we had been going very well, it wasn't going to stay that way. So we went back to Pikeham, which was the venue where we'd had our big dramatic round a couple of months prior. Although we were in a different ring, Eric was still not very happy. He was quite anxious there. He was stressed. In the horse walk, he had been rearing and napping. And we got in the ring and he had a moment um, after a couple of fences. And although I did manage to complete the round, again, he was stressed. He wasn't particularly happy. And it was just it was just a venue that I felt was cursed at that point, <laughs> which is obviously silly, but he just didn't like it there. For whatever reason, he just was so stressed. It didn't leave me feeling particularly confident for our next show, which was Dorset, but actually he was amazing. This is this show here. It was our first time at this venue. Whenever I took him to a new venue, I was always a little bit on edge because you never know if Eric's going to like it or not. And he was incredible. We had some placings on the first day um, in the meeting in the 110 i'm pretty sure he came second in the 110 and he was getting really quick in his jump offs at this point um he looks completely different from the horse he started with he was really starting to get super competitive and start winning prize money and then this round was our hoys bronze league uh qualifier so this was my first ever attempt at a class like this. It was also the biggest round we'd ever jumped together. At the time, it was about between a metre 10 and 115. And a couple of the fences, I think, went up to 120 in the final round. Um, and this was a huge step for us. We had a really great round. And although we didn't qualify in this particular show we did actually end up going to the semi-final um for the hoys bronze league although we didn't end up getting to hoys it was still just a huge step for us to even be at this point bearing in mind the horse we started with um it just felt like an absolute dream come true to even be attempting these qualifying classes and like i said it was the biggest course we had done together at that point um and to go clear was just an amazing feeling and i was absolutely thrilled with him and so it brings us to the fateful days of the South of England County show. Now, Eric had been going really well up until this point. Um, and on day one, it was a couple of days, uh, I just did some show jumping. We had a really great round. Um, he jumped in the metre in the 110. It was our first time jumping on grass. He was super relaxed. He handled the atmosphere so well. It was a big county show. I did expect him to get a little bit wound up, but he was amazing. And then um, on day two, I don't know what demon possessed me to make me think that doing an interhunt really on Eric was a good idea. So on the day one, um, he was actually amazing. He was a little bit antsy, as you can see. It was a huge crowd of people watching the interhunt relay. Um, but our team actually won. Um, he was 
brilliant. He handled it really well. He got a little bit stressed, but um, nothing unmanageable. We had no dramas. Um, and our team won the qualifier. So we came back for the final the next day, which is when it all went to absolute shit. Um, unfortunately, we've been held in the warm up for about an hour, which wound Eric up hugely. He does not do well with long warm ups. And we got in the ring and he completely lost it. Uh, the crowd was cheering, it just got to him, and he had a big napping moment, the gate was here, the exit, and this is when it all unravelled. And it was a real shame that this happened, because he had been going so well leading up to this point, and it was totally on me. Um, I should not have entered him into this interim relay. I thought it would be a bit of fun, I didn't realise how big of a crowd it would be, if I'm being honest, and I think that the atmosphere just got to him a bit too much. There's all the people watching this absolute disaster. <laughs> was my round with Eric in the final. Um, like I said, our team won the qualifier, but poor Eric was just so stressed and I did actually end up dismounting because he was very upset and I just took him out of the ring and took him home. I was quite cautious with the next show I went to in Wales because um, I thought he'd be quite stressed, but he walked into the ring quiet as a lamb. He jumped some lovely rounds. Um, it was like a completely different horse and he didn't seem to be affected by South of England at all because I was expecting perhaps for him to have taken a few steps backwards after that huge mistake on my part of putting him into that interim relay. But he seemed to bounce back really well. And he did a lovely couple of days jumping at Wales. We had a great round to finish where he won the metre five. Um, and I was super happy with him and how quickly he bounced back from that. Our next big show was the Senior Academy show and we were jumping for Team Kent on the senior team and Eric actually won his warm-up class before this um, in the metre five and then this was the 110 for the senior teams we were jumping for Team Kent which was our region and this is me actually forgetting where I was going. <laughs> just about managed to get to the right fence um at this point eric's absolutely flying we have our jump offs down he's super super speedy against the clock and he's pretty careful too and uh this was our jump off round um our team had did a great job um unfortunately we didn't qualify for the final as a couple of us had fences including me um me and eric had two fences in the jump off one after another but he did take this awesome flyer at the last um he was turning into a very honest horse at this point and then this was charred for the Hoys Bronze League semi-final. Now, for the semi-final, you do have to jump three rounds and it goes up each time. The starting height is a metre five and it generally finishes at about 125. Um, we got to round two where we unfortunately had a fence down, so we didn't make it to Hoys, but I was absolutely thrilled to even be here. I never imagined to have a horse that would be capable of doing a qualifying horse that could potentially get us to Hoys. It was really a dream come true. And I was I was so happy that we had even made it that far. We're in the middle of summer at this point. So then we head off to Stoneley for the British Show Jumping National Championships. And Eric in the first class on the first day was incredible. He won the whole thing. Um, <laughs> it was just amazing. This is our jump off. He felt super relaxed. Um, and when he's relaxed, I can up the speed a bit because he's properly focused. Um, so I was really hopeful for our second class, which is when we were jumping for Team Kent in the academy teams. Um, back in the same arena, very similar course. And it was just the goal to get a clear round so the team could get the right amount of points. Um and for whatever reason, we come around this corner and Eric just has a moment. Now, he'd already jumped that fence in the class before. I don't know what bothered him here. I really didn't expect him to have a little moment there, but it was okay. We, you know, regrouped, popped it again, and he was fine for the rest of the show. Um, I don't know where it came from. And then the next day, he jumped a lovely clear in the 110. Um, he was super. I think we, at this point, were just kind of accepting that it could come out at any point, sometimes when we were least expecting it. Um, and all that you could do was just settle Eric down and carry on. And either he would, you know, relax and carry on, or he would remain stressed and you'd have to call it a day. It was kind of in this point of acceptance here that this was just how Eric was um, and we could work through it. I then took Eric cross-country schooling for the first time just for a bit of fun and he did really enjoy it. He was super, super fresh. Um, he was excellent. He jumped everything put in front of him, but he did find it all very exciting. He was quite enthusiastic and did nearly buck me off a couple of times. No! 
Whoa! Eric! We had a bit of protest about going in the water. Now, Eric is never been a fan of water. He doesn't like being ridden in the rain. He doesn't like going through puddles when you're out hacking. And he certainly doesn't like water complexes while going out cross country, clearly. And he made his feelings very well known on this matter. But after some patience and perseverance, he did go through the water very nicely. He's just not a fan of it. It then leads us on to Hickstead, which is the most highly anticipated show of the year for me by far. Hickstead main arena had been a dream of mine for years and yet whenever I went to Hickstead over the years with different horses I always had a rubbish time <laughs> always one year one of my old horses Inky he went lame and he would literally had to have six months off after that <laughs> I just did not have the best memories associated with Hickstead but I was determined to have a good time with Eric and we certainly had that this was our meter class where he qualified for the main ring on his first attempt so I was absolutely thrilled um main arena had been my dream for so long and he was just incredible and he did such a nice speedy jump off and what I haven't mentioned is I actually had brought Eric to Hickstead for their June show just for a day and I didn't have any videos still on my phone unfortunately but it went really badly um so badly Eric napped he found the whole thing too stressful I didn't um, qualify for anything and I didn't have any clear rounds. So I, I braved coming back and I really wasn't expecting it to go well because he didn't like it last time. And he surprised me. He was amazing. And this was our one meter 10 round, which he also qualified for the main arena final for. So he had qualified for two main arena finals when I've been trying years to qualify for any on all different horses and Eric qualified for two in one day and I was just over the moon he was amazing and he was super relaxed and the last time I'd brought him to Hicks he just hadn't been he'd been really stressed out by the atmosphere it's a big big show with lots of rings jumping at the same time whereas this time around I think we'd grown as a partnership so much more and he trusted me a lot more that he came out and performed beautifully and made another massive dream of mine come true. So this, like I said, this is his qualifying 110 round. He did a fab jump off. He came, I want to say seventh, sixth or seventh. I can't really remember, but it's top eight qualify. I really wasn't expecting to qualify. I actually had a back injury at the time. So I was in quite a lot of pain and really not riding my best. I was just trying to get a clear round. But I do get carried away and jump off. So I ended up doing some turns and we qualified. Luckily, I had no expectations for the final because <laughs> this is how our first final went. A little taster of uh, how Eric felt about the very, very spooky Hickshead Main Arena. Did we nearly leave the ring? Yes. Yes, we did. But luckily, we managed to actually stay in the ring and not get eliminated. But... This was the 1m10 final, which was first, and the course really didn't suit us. Fence 1, 2, 3 and 4 were all down by the gate. And I said, between 3 and 4, I just know he's going to try and nap to the gate. It's a very big, spooky arena. And lo and behold, there he goes. He naps to the gate. <laughs> and unfortunately, this gate isn't actually a gate because there's no gate. <laughs> and I really, really did not want to get eliminated. I really didn't want Erica to leave the ring. So I really did stick it out. Um, and it rode him very strongly into the triple which is why we are coming in at a breakneck speed. But luckily, Eric is super careful and left it up. But after that, the rest of our round went quite nicely and he started to relax the more he jumped. He's more likely to start napping in the beginning of a round if he finds it quite spooky or a bit stressful, the environment. And he doesn't always do it, as you can see. But this was a very big spooky arena. So I did expect him for his first time in there to have a spook and a nap and unfortunately he did have a little fence here because I was riding very very forward because I just wanted to give him confidence but he actually jumped really well and I was just happy to be there honestly I was just happy to be there I was there for the photos the experience and nothing else so I was just thrilled that we managed to get around and not get eliminated um and then for our meter final, he came in so much more relaxed. I just knew that he was feeling better. Now, he'd already been in the ring. So um, even though fence one to two here did swing near the gate again, he didn't think twice about napping. He carried on jumping. He felt much more calm and confident. 
mentioned that he'd already seen the arena and he'd adapted very well to it. And what's nice to see the progression in Eric is that even though he'd had a moment in the round before, that didn't negatively affect him for this round. And I think if we'd gone into this arena six months prior, it would have been an entirely different story. But because we'd built up a bit more trust with each other, a bit more of our relationship, we had a really, really lovely time. And he actually did end up going clear and into the jump off. Yeah, we did have a fence in the jump off, but I was, again, I was just happy to be there. I was just having a good time. Really not had much experience jumping him on grass. Um, so I was a little bit cautious on my turns, but he did an amazing job and I was just really happy. So after a few more really good show jumping shows where Eric was super calm and well behaved, I thought, why not spice things up a bit? Let's go fucking team chasing. Yeah, you're probably thinking, Lily... You must be out of your goddamn mind. And yeah, that's a fair assumption because this is basically how that went. Eric found that extremely, extremely exciting. So uh, enjoy this next clip. Oh my God. Sorry, 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 sorry. Eric. Whoa. Come on. Turn around. Turn around. Come on. Come on, Eric. Yes, that was me nearly getting rodeoed off Eric there. And this is Eric napping away from the start line. This very, very kind lady decided to lead us back to the warm up. My team had already set off, so I had to join another team. Um, and actually, once away, he was beyond incredible. He was just amazing. Now, after that first display, you're probably thinking I'm absolutely crackers for taking him again. But once we got a lead off the start, he's actually incredible. He just struggles with getting off the start line and not getting too excited and legs going in all directions and leaping around. When he's away, he absolutely loves cross country. He's so bold and brave. He'll tackle absolutely anything. And this was our second team chase where he jumped around clear. So, so amazing. Had a lead off the start and didn't have any issues. Um, he was still following another horse. So that leads on to our third team chase in the Cotswolds. <laughs> As you can see, Eric was very excited. He knew what was going on at this point. So when we turned up, he got so excited. The minute I got on him, he was ready to go, um, which made warming up uh, basically impossible. So I would just get led down to the start and set off. Um, and he led the team round the Cotswolds. Um, this was our first time leading and he was just amazing. Um, there's actually a head cam video of this whole round on my YouTube channel. It's probably actually the last video I posted. Um, so if you want to watch that, the GoPro of this whole round, that is there and you can go and watch it because that was just an incredible experience um and he was just amazing but i did accidentally jump the wrong hedge at the end <laughs> yes that was a video of me and eric clearing a one meter 60 hedge by accident it was not the hedge i was meant to jump but what a confident awesome little horse for tackling that hedge with no hesitation so this was now November, we were coming to the end of the year and it was our last show before Eric went off on his winter holidays and this show was at Aintree and we had qualified for the National Amateur Championships and we started the week off really well. Eric won his first class with this super, super speedy jump off. Now this arena was really spooky and the warm up was very tight and small and cramped. So it really didn't suit us as a combination. But he really pulled it out of the bag on the first day. And I had high hopes for the week ahead, um, which just unfortunately did not, <laughs> did not lead anywhere. This was day two and Eric, he got a bit stressed. And like I said, the arena was very spooky. But I hadn't had an outburst like this in a while in the ring. So... I was a little concerned, but I thought we're going to carry on. We're going to get around this course. And I was hoping that if he could come in the arena and have a nice round, he would relax for our future rounds that week. Um, but that unfortunately wasn't the case. He really, for whatever reason, he wasn't spooky the day before, but this day he was super, super spooky. And it resulted in a second outburst in the corner there. Now, this isn't about the gate. This was, for some reason, down that particular long side, 
Eric was just finding it really spooky with all the trade stands and the people. It was just a bit too much for him to handle, but I did manage to get him to carry on. And he was jumping well. He was rushing. He, was, he wasn't really listening, but he was leaving the fences up. And I thought if I could just get him round this course, hopefully it would set us up for the week ahead and he would relax in the ring a bit more. But unfortunately, for a third time, he did nap here. Um, and, and that was the end of that. We were eliminated. And it was quite disheartening, to be honest, because I hadn't had a round like this on him in so long. So we came in. The next day for our final round, I pulled out of my other classes, but this was our big final and <laughs> we definitely started it with a bang. Um, this was probably the worst he was this week and it had just escalated from the day before. He really did not want to be there. I didn't want to be there, but I thought we're going to give this final a go. And to be honest, I shouldn't have done it. He, he wasn't going to play ball and... Yeah, he had that outburst at the beginning and that was it, actually. He really did um, jump round after that. He was quite stressed, though. He was quite tense. He's not jumping his best. I was quite stressed and tense as well. This is another angle of that same round. Um, as you can see, he just was so anxious. Um, I, I thought that perhaps if I could get him more comfortable in the ring, we could make it a better experience, but that's just not what happened. He just got more wound up and anxious where the warm up was very tight and cramped. He wasn't happy in there with all the other horses. And in the ring, it was just far too spooky for Eric to handle. So Aintree was our final show of the year. Eric then went and spent two months living out 24-7 in the field for his winter holidays. And it really wasn't the way I wanted to end the year, but it was a very Eric way to end the year. I have accepted with Eric that there are just going to be some arenas that he does not get on with. And he didn't do well in Aintree with there being so much going on around the edge of the arena. He just came in very very spooky every time he went in there. So after Eric spent two months in the field, I spent a good few weeks hacking him, flatting him, just slowly bringing him back into work, ready to start competing again in the new year. After spending, I'd say about four to six weeks bringing Eric back into work before competing him again, I did a couple of local shows before we headed off to Berry Farm for our first stay away of the year. And he was brilliant at Berry Farm. He really does like it there. He felt super relaxed. And I am trying a titanium mask on him, which is what he's wearing here. Now, I don't know if these things actually work. I've always been a bit sceptical about them, but I am in the process of trialing with Eric. So I'm happy to give feedback over on my Instagram. If you want to follow me on there, I do give updates on how I think that is going. But this was our first day away of the year. He did perform really well. He ended up qualifying for a second blue chip final. Um, he'd qualified for the first one at the end of 2023. And this was around in the metre 10. I'm pretty sure we got a placing for this. Um, my memory is so, so terrible. This was honestly a few weeks ago and I can't remember where we placed, but I'm pretty sure we got a placing. <laughs> um, he was really good and he's come back from his holiday feeling like a completely new horse. We're now nearing the end of our video as this is my most recent event with Eric. This was our 1m10 round at Addington. He did actually have a lazy pole there, but we're going to look past that because he actually jumped amazingly for the rest of the round. <laughs> it was just a lazy fence to start with. Um, but this was Addington two-day show. I took him there as a test run before Blue Chip because Blue Chip is being held at this venue. And I wanted to make sure that Eric liked the venue first before I brought him here for Blue Chip. And I'm pleased to report back that this venue is Eric approved and he was excellent. Uh, so day one, we jumped the meter in 110. He had a lazy fence in both classes. But as you can see from this round on day one, he was actually jumping really, really well. So I wasn't fussed at all that we'd had a fence down. He, um, he felt amazing. Like I said, after his holiday, he really has come back feeling incredible. And he's 14 this year, so he's not a young boy anymore. He's by no means extremely old, but I really do like to save him now for these more important shows rather than jump him every week so it had been a few weeks since Barry Farm and he hadn't jumped in that time and we came to Addington and he came out just feeling so amazing 
and I was really pleased with how he jumped on day one. Now this is probably one of my proudest moments with Eric and also a huge dream come true for me because we jumped our first fox hunter class which is 1m20 in the first half and it can go up to 1m30 in the second half which is utterly terrifying. I have never competed at this level before. Eric has jumped a couple of fox hunter classes way back in 2018 which was over six years ago um, and he didn't do particularly well <laughs> he hasn't got the most fantastic record at this level um so this was really really special to me now we did have two fences down but both were rider error um i was very nervous um to jump this class on eric it was very much an impulse decision to enter it but it really just was a complete dream come true he jumped phenomenally he just blew me away. I really did not expect him to feel so incredible over these fences that felt absolutely massive for us. And um, it really just felt like this year spent with Eric has just all that hard work had paid off because the horse I started with and the horse I have in this video are two completely different things. And it just makes me so proud of him, of me, of everybody that's helped us along the way. It's just so special to be here, jumping at a level I could only have ever dreamed of a few years ago. And Eric is the one that has made that possible. And he is just so, so special to me and I love him to pieces. I really hope everybody has enjoyed this video. Congratulations if you've made it to the end because it has been a long one. If you would like to keep up with me and Eric and all of Eric's antics, you can follow us on Instagram, which is lily.equestrian. And you can also follow us on TikTok, which is lily.equestrianx. And of course, here on YouTube, I do hope to be posting a little bit more regularly now. I know I've had a bit of a break from YouTube and just been posting my team chasing videos, but this was a video a long time in the making that I've been so excited to post. And it's taken me a while to actually sit down and put all of these videos together of over a year of Eric footage. I'm so incredibly proud of all that we have achieved in this year spent together as a partnership and I'm really really excited for the future with Eric.